Today, we are making the world famous Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. Come along as we walk through the steps to recreate this famous sandwich and we do it without pickle juice. To make the brine, let's start with one quarter cup plus one teaspoon of Morton's kosher salt. Then add one tablespoon of MSG. Yes, the stuff your mom told you not to get at your favorite Chinese restaurant. Two teaspoons of paprika paprika, which brings color and a little spice. Next, add a quarter teaspoon of coarse ground black pepper and one teaspoon of mustard powder. Next, add half a cup of granulated sugar. Now let's add one liter of water to our salt and spice mixture and stir until they've completely dissolved. Use a little elbow grease to get all the salt dissolved. And this brine will get you closer to the original Chick-fil-A flavor than anything that currently else including pickle juice. Chick-fil-A's secret to their sandwiches. Miniature four ounce chicken breasts untouched by the butcher's blade. Now I'm scratching my head trying to figure out if they're farming pocket sized poultry or if Chick-fil-A is a literal reference to their use of actual chicks. The chicken breasts in my neck of the woods tip the scales at a hefty 12 to 16 ounces. Are they feeding these birds at my store with some Godzilla juice? Or is it just Texan tradition to serve chicken that could double as a flotation device? To match Chick-fil-A's Lilliputian portions, we embark on a culinary surgery, trimming, defatting, and sidelining the tenderloin for a future in chicken strip stardom. Our quest for the perfect sandwich filet involves a delicate snip and tuck, reducing the breast by half and then pressing it thinner than my patients on a Monday morning. Butterfly and bisect the bulky half to achieve that dainty Chick-fil-A essence. Aim for svelte, even profiles to ensure a democratic cooking process. Next, our chicken undergoes a spa treatment in the brine bath we prepared earlier, marinating for a prime six to eight hours long enough to ponder its existence. Ensuring it's chilled during its soak, this chicken will emerge reborn, ready to ascend to culinary heaven post-fry. Pat them dry, and voila, you've prepped your chicken cast for their crispy golden debut. The breading or season coater, which is what Chick-fil-A calls it, is our next step. Begin with two cups of all-purpose flour. Welcome two teaspoons of MSG, and if MSG isn't your jam, no judgments here. One and a half teaspoon of baking powder, two tablespoons plus two teaspoons of non-fat milk powder, and half teaspoon of white pepper for a subtle kick. Two teaspoons of mustard powder for depth, and a playful duo of cayenne pinches for warmth. Bought two tablespoons plus two teaspoons of powder sugar onto the stage. It's like giving your seasoned coater a gentle spa treatment, ensuring a smooth, clump-free existence. This crafted concoction should generously coat between six to eight fillets from two chicken breasts, plus a couple of tenderloins for good measure. Next, we need to heat our oil in our deep fryer to 325 degrees. Peanut oil is preferred as it is used by Chick-fil-A in store. If you don't have a deep fryer, use a Dutch oven or even a deep frying pan. Next, we need to make the Chick-fil-A milk wash. Let's start with the foundational element of our milk wash, cracking two eggs directly into the bowl. Imagine the bowl as your culinary canvas, with the eggs as the first stroke of brilliance. Once the eggs are comfortably nestled in the bowl, it's time to introduce one cup of 1% milk to the mix. Pour it gently over the eggs, marrying the two ingredients in a liquid embrace. Now, armed with a whisk, blend the eggs and milk together with enthusiasm and grace. Whisk until the mixture is thoroughly combined, achieving a smooth, homogenous consistency that's both inviting and ready for action. For that ultimate crunch on your fillets, here's a chef's secret. Grab a couple of tablespoons of your freshly whipped milk wash and introduce them to your seasoned coater mix. Now get hands on, dive in with your fingers and work the mixture, pressing and rolling it between your fingers. This technique, affectionately known as seeding, transforms your breading into a landscape of small, thick clumps. These aren't just any clumps, they're the magic behind the curtain, promising to elevate your crust to new heights of crunchiness. As you coat your chicken, these seeded beads will cling to the surface, ensuring that each bite is a symphony of crispness. This simple trick is your ticket to achieving that coveted extra crispy exterior, reminiscent of your favorite Chick-fil-A fillets, but with a personal touch. Once the oil hits the right temp, it's time to prep the fillets. 
Dip them in the milk wash, shaking off excess liquid. Then firmly press each filet into the breading mixture. According to Chick-fil-A's method, press with enough force that you might lift off the ground. Imagine the calf workouts. Flatten the filet evenly without squishing it, aiming for uniform thickness for a quick, even fry. Shake off any extra flour and lower the filets into the fryer. Chick-fil-A's standard cook time is around 4 minutes and 20 seconds, though adjustments might be needed based on your filet's thickness. Once golden and crispy, transfer the chicken from the fryer basket onto a wire rack over a baking sheet. This setup keeps the filets crispy by allowing air to circulate. Now's the ideal moment to focus on the buns. After experimenting with various types, I found that brioche hamburger buns from the deli section or bread aisle closely mimic Chick-fil-A's signature bun. The key step is to generously butter both the top and bottom of the buns before giving them a light toast. For Chick-fil-A's unique flavor, Vlasic Oval's hamburger dill chips. While slightly thicker, their flavor mirrors the Chick-fil-A pickles almost exactly. From the Chick-fil-A training guide on pickle placement is that they should be dating, not mating, meaning they shouldn't overlap. With our pickles appropriately spaced, it's time to place our crispy fried chicken on the bottom bun and gently place the top bun over it completing our culinary masterpiece. And there you have it. Well, here we are, the final moments. Did we recreate the Chick-fil-A? All right, here we go. Smells like it. It's a Chick-fil-A. It really is. Wow, it's nice. Mmm. The pickle's the key. Mmm. 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 That's a great sandwich. So good. That is definitely Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A at home. How awesome. Hey everyone. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel at Higher Cooking for more delicious recipes and cooking tips. I'd love to hear from you. So don't hesitate to leave your comments or suggestions down below. Your feedback helps me create content that you'll love. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.